Hello. How's everyone tonight? Good, just gonna tag a few people while I am waiting to jump on here. Waiting for you guys to join me. All right, there we go. Well, hello, Deanna. That Michelle, oh, uh, Mickey, I saw go by there. So, how's everybody tonight? It's been a little bit of a crazy day for me today. So, I don't have my colors picked out for this cute little guy, but it's okay. We'll pick them as we go. So, tonight I decided to do what's cracking. I thought this would be fun. And I didn't know, but did you guys know that we have a challenge in the group on Facebook for this month called Get Snarky? <laughs> All the snarky things. So I thought I would do this card because it would be perfect for that. Hi, Karen. Hi, Cheryl. Hello, you guys. Hi, Mickey. Yay, look at all the people jumping on. Yippee. So I've already um, taken him out of this and put him in my Misty so I can stamp him. And then we have the dies for this one as well. So that's super awesome. And I thought these had really funny sentiments like, let's get naughty. <laughs> What's cracking? I like big ships and I cannot lie. And ahoy there. And then there's two little duckies. I'm going to put one of them in mine. And then there's some little lotion and shampoo and stuff down here. Why are we calling a priest? Because <laughs> we need some help. <laughs> we need some help here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. We need some help because it's cold here. I'm, not, I'm super not happy about that. <laughs> I do not like to be cold. So I set up my Misty with the Kraken and a little ducky in the corner. And then I put the sentiment, what's Kraken, on here. I probably won't be able to have time to color a whole background with this, but I'm definitely going to stamp it on there so I can do one maybe tomorrow night. We can come back in and do the background. I don't know. We'll see. So, it's the name on Facebook. It is her name on Facebook. So, no skin colors, just uh, um, a Kraken skin color today. No human skin colors. So, we can make that Kraken any color we want. Which will be super duper fun. You can't remember who else to tag? Oh, there's a few people who usually jump on. Um, hold on, I have a little list of a couple of people. I'll tell you. A very small list of a few people who have been on the last few nights. Or at least I think I have a list here somewhere. I bet it's, I bet it wouldn't, would you think it would be on my notepad where I take all my notes when we have our calls? Brenda Olvera, she's usually here each time if you could tag her. Becky Heydrich, and the other ones that are on my list are already here. So look at that. They were Johnny on the spot today. See, look at you thinking of more people to tag. 
So I'm using my espresso to um, press down the misty, but I want this to be just a little bit darker. So I'm just going to stamp it one more time, hence the awesomeness of a misty. Hi, Tyler. I think my problem might be my magnets are in the wrong place. And they're causing it to not be able to close all the way. But anyway, we got it. We got it. Got it. You're not late tonight. <laughs> nope. You are here. It's perfect. Perfect timing. So I'm just wetting my chamois so I can clean off my stamp set because, you know, that's the way I roll. Keep them clean, keep them nice. Although as many times as I clean them, my fish stamp set, it looks like it's been through several hurricanes. It is beat down just a little bit from all the stamping we've been doing with that. It's craziness. More chamois are on the way. I love the chamois. Love it, love it, love it. Well, we can leave him on there. I don't need to peel him off right now. Because we all know how I have to put him back on perfectly, so I'll just do that later. Uh-oh, magnets stuck together. Did you hear them? New chamois cases, too. Woohoo! Your fishies are not happy either. I know, right? I'm like it's a good thing those things last even when they look when they look a little beat down because hi Alicia um because if they didn't if we had to buy new ones oh you'd be in trouble so I think what we're gonna do is you know we're gonna start with his eyes We're going to start with his eyes, and before we get to picking out the eye color and stuff, I'm going to use this C1 just to kind of go around the outside of his eye right here. Because this is going to make that eye look really dimensional. Oh, let me zoom in for you. Woohoo! There we go. Look at that. All right, there we go. See, I caught it before you said it, Jamie. I caught it. And then I'm going to use my colorless blender. And I'm going to push back on that gray that I put in there. Just a little bit, not too much. And then when I put in the color and stuff, it's going to make that eyeball look more dimensional. Hey, you can see now. You can see because I zoomed in. I probably shouldn't do this because it's probably going to give you guys an earthquake, but I am going to move this camera over because I tend to work on my desk over here and I keep getting off the screen. So sorry about the earthquake. You need a few refills? Oh yeah. It's not fun when you need refills. The rain is gone <laughs> well not here it's not sleep is what we have right now which is never fun so I think yeah I think that we're gonna do this sweet little guy in what color I don't know I need to pick a color Any suggestions? Hello, Kathy. Hi, Brenda. Suggestions? Green, purple, pink. Purple and pink. Green and pink. Yeah, I see the obstacles in my way. I can't go anywhere around here because there's too much orange. Oh, orange and yellow. Wow, that ought to be interesting. Okay. We can do that. Let me just see here. Let me choose me some colors. 
purple pink. I think we might try the orange tonight because we don't do orange very often. I don't. I definitely don't. Orange is not my thing for sure. But because Tyler's here, let's do some let's do some orange for Tyler. Cuz we know that'd be his favorite one. So let's see, which one do I want? 15, 35, and you guys are going to see it in true form tonight. You're going to see me test out the colors to see if, you know how I always tell you when we get on, I say, oh, I, this is how I test out my colors to see if these colors will go together. Well, we're going to actually do that live tonight because I don't have my colors already picked out. So, there's my little scratch paper that I used last night. And then, this is what I've chosen so far. So, I'm going to test and see if they blend well together. So, this is YR18. And this one, mm-hmm, YR16. And I just got this marker new, brand spanking new. YR15, and then we're going to throw a bit of yellow in there because that's the way I like to roll. Yeah, Y35, and then this one, yep, well that works, that went real well, YR31, orange colors tonight. So look, that blend came out really good. Everything smoothly goes together and it blends really well. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, sweet. Right? Okay, so YR18 is our first color. And I'm going to find all the shadow areas for my little Kraken. I think I'm going to move this over here if that doesn't shadow your light. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one over here that's behind the bathtub. And just, just shadow that a bit. Yeah, the 3D printer's still running. It's running all the time. Trying to get that stuff done so that shipment can go out. Oh, by the way, Jamie, how about if I just bring them on the airplane? Yes, find the shadows you're sure of first. And then, if you have to go back in, you have to go back in. So, this little piece right here, like, let me use my nifty little, uh, nifty little pointers here. So, on this tentacle right here, these little things are the underside like this of the tentacle, so we're not gonna do those. We're just gonna do the, the body. It looks a little bit like bubbles, but it's not. That Those are the tentacles. So I'm gonna do just a little bit around that, that tentacle and then along the bottom here. I'm also gonna do a little bit right here in this little dip where his tentacle's moving. You should be fine. We have quite a few coming, so. Um, and then right here, where it's coming out of the bubbles. Oh, I have to tell you, I got the coolest call tonight, or text actually. So every night when my grandson goes to bed, we read him a story usually the wonky donkey, hee-haw, and he's not at, at my house tonight, but um, my he has a fascination with Frozen. I know he's a little late, he's a little late on that ballpark, but he's also very young, so <laughs> he wasn't around when it first came out. Um, and he, sh he sang the, the whole Frozen song, the Let It Go song, with like she started the song and he sang it with her 
and she recorded it and sent it to me so I could hear him. Oh my gosh, it was the most precious thing ever. It was so sweet. It just melted my heart. It was, I just couldn't even believe how much of that song he knew. I mean, he has been watching it like nonstop now for a while, but um, yeah, he was definitely, definitely nailing that song. And even at the end, so um, there's this one part where, um, where she says, I'm free. And he said, I'm three. <laughs> Okay, I'll send it to you, Mom. And he goes, he goes, I'm three. And then she started laughing and trying not to laugh because it was in the video and I mean in the recording. And so then he finished the whole rest of the song without her. <laughs> it was so cute. Oh, uh, and I just got it about ten minutes before I went live, so I was like, he's so cute. It just melts my heart for reals. So we're really just finding these shadow areas where the tentacles bend and fold and, um, right? <laughs> exactly. He's so cute. So he, he's had a rough weekend because he busted his eye open and had to get stitches on Sunday. So that was unfortunate. And even though he's just turned four, this is his second set of stitches. That video does play, like, when he's over here, like, continuously. So this one is through the little ship. And so I'm going to get this part that's all the way inside the little ship. So it's kind of hard to tell. And the first time I colored this, hi, Kathy. The first time I colored this, what I had to do was... I had to just move on and then go back in and do the parts that I couldn't. Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I had to go back in and fix places that I missed because it was it's hard to see where all the little tentacles are. But I'm going to try to get them all this time. But if we miss them, no worries. We can always go back in. And fix it as soon as we see it. I mean, he does have a bunch of tentacles going on here. So, I'm going to do these other, I'm going to do his head last. I'm going to spend a lot of time on his head. So, we're going to leave that alone for right now. Because it is a really super detailed image. But it is so fun to color. I mean, like, I really like this image. I remember I was a little intimidated when I first got it. I was thinking, hmm, I might mess that up. But once I got into it, I was like, oh, I really like this one. So many techniques to practice on with it. So this is the part that separates that underside of his tentacle. And then I'm going to come back in and do these really, really small brush strokes. That was for you, Jamie. He does. Yes. I just love him. The Yeti is great. Jamie does the Yeti really well. The Yeti is fun to color too. He takes a little while because he's got a lot of detail too. But I mean for a newbie, not for Jamie. But I think a newbie it would take a while to color. And doing these lives, I get to color a, a lot more of images I wasn't coloring before. And it forces me to make the time to color. I think I've got all of his little tentacles now. But, you know, like I said, if we miss one, it's all right. It's all all right. So moving on to my YR16. And on this one, somebody's texting me. I hope that didn't mess up your, the feed. So I'm just going to pull a little bit away from where I put that darkest shadow with this next color. There'll be some spots that won't get the full color, but oh, the full color spectrum, but it'll be all right. <laughs> I 
Phil and Mermaid dish. What were we doing? Coloring in your sleep? Were we doing coloring, co live coloring videos for you? Did you have us on a big screen like in a movie theater? <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. Better to have videos of us coloring in your dreams than to have nightmares. Try not to turn him around too much. I don't want to make you guys dizzy. But he does have a lot of different angles to color when you're coloring him. So I'm just going along the edge where the darkest shade is and just blending that out. I'll kind of give you a better look up close. See how it, it blends really well together given that shadow effect? So at least that'll, that'll help you'd be able to see what I'm doing up close. Now I will tell you, I think I might have a problem with a live on Friday this week because um, something came up and hubby and I have to go somewhere. So I might not be around for that late night live. But if you miss that on Friday, I might just have to jump in and do one on like Sunday. <laughs> Give you a, an additional one since, since I'll be gone on Friday. But I'll still be here tomorrow. Just not on Friday. You were not consulted. <laughs> No, because it just came up. Oh, see, there you go. Tyler's going to be live with Floral Friday. Awesome. It's going to be earlier in the day. I might even be able to be on that one. I might be in the car, but I won't be able to color along with you. But I will definitely rewatch because that Floral Friday is going to be amazing. If you guys haven't seen the posts showing what he's doing on Floral Friday, oh, man, you don't want to miss that. Especially if you like flowers. What time is the... Oh, there we go. Oops, look at me knocking stuff off all over my bed. Um, 5.30. What is that? You have to tell them whether it's... Did it say central? I don't know. It went by so fast I couldn't even uh, read it. Floral Friday. So Tyler is going to do a, a project with the florals on um, Fridays in, I don't know, Tyler, you type it out. I don't know all the details on that very well. I just know that he's doing a live and he posted an amazing project he's going to be teaching and I'm super excited about it, but I can't remember all of the details. Look at that! You go, Jamie, putting all the time zones on there. You rock. And you think you might be tired tonight. He will be in this same group. He will be in the group that you're watching this video in right now. Well, I don't want to get orange on the soap. This is his little bar of soap here. Because he's playing, but he's also washing up. We got a little bit on there. So we'll have to use the colorless blender to fix that up. Oh, look at it. Post in the groups, too. Awesome. One and only orchid. Tyler, if you guys didn't know, Tyler is really, really good with the florals. I am not. Doesn't mean I won't do a floral. I can color the florals. Like, I can, I can color the heck out of some florals, but then you ask me to put them together, and I'm calling Jamie. I don't know how to do this. Flowers, I just, they're not really my thing. I like them. 
yeah, what the project is. Mm, you're going to like it too. I bet. I bet money. Look at this awesome orange one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, mine? No. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's awesome. Hi, Antoinette. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Oh, I know, Mama. I know you like flowers. Jamie's your gal to be teaching you that for sure. I can color them. I just can't put them together. I feel like this is shadowing my project. I don't know. Feeling a little off today. But that doesn't stop me from coloring. There is never a time when I don't want to color. Oh, you like the orange? Yes, a March floral. There'll be a March floral too. Oh yeah, we are going to have some amazing. And by the end of this year, I'm going to be good at florals. I mean, really good. Because I'm going to be coloring them all year long. I was working on making the make and take um, project tonight. All the way up until right before I went live. That's why I didn't have time to pick out my colors or anything beforehand. Because I was trying to make projects. And I was trying it different ways. Because... I don't know if you guys know what goes into creating a project for the expo but when I create projects for the expo first I just I have to go through all the theories of what would be a good project and you know then I have to make it and then I usually make it three or four different ways to see what is easiest to teach and then I make it again and write all the instructions down and then I make it again so I the instructions are right. Hi, Becky. So there's a lot of work that goes into each project that I'm going to teach. So I made it twice already. So two different ways tonight. And I like it. I'll have to get Jamie's buy-in on which one she likes better. And then, um, and then from there, we'll make the next one and... Then I'll start writing instructions and then I got to cut all this stuff for the kit. <laughs> it's like five times for the retreat, for the online retreats. Yeah, I do three to five projects. So it's like a lot of project making before. So by the time I make it with you guys, I already have four or five copies at my house. I should give them away. As, I should give them away as prizes <laughs> because I have so many. But I'm always like, ah, who wants the one I made? I taught them how to make it. They can do it themselves. Do you know if they have a stamp die set for the pansy flower? Oh, yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sure do. The pansy stamps and dies in stock. Oh, they're amazing. Did you see the pansy I did? I really liked it. Although I had to get some edumacation on how to put it together. Hi, Karen. But um, I had to get some education from Jamie. But I like how it turned out. So I was pretty happy with it. Look at that orange. Mmm. What? You're not friends. Yes. So you can probably um, check out that live that she did the other day on our um, YouTube channel because we've been uploading all these videos to the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really pretty orange. So now it's going to shift just a little bit because now I'm going to throw some yellow in there. So why 35 I don't know, these days I've been really into the mixing the colors. So if I do blue, I want to throw in some blue-green. If I do purple, I want to throw in some 
red, pinkish colors. I don't know what it is, but just play and mix the colors these days. But that's great for you guys, because look, you guys get to mix with me, right along with me, and get to learn some new color combos. Awesome. So we're just blending out that previous color and adding in a little bit of that yellow. Can you see that yellow really popping out now? That's super cool. I'm liking these colors. I probably would have never done him orange. So I'm really glad you guys suggested orange because pretty cool. <laughs> Do you get dibs on this card? You're lucky you just said that. Because I was going to say, oh, Tyler, you want dibs on this orange card? <laughs> I haven't even made it into a card yet, although I have a really good idea. I started cutting the paper right before, but I ran out of time. Um, so I didn't get to cut everything out for the card. So um, once I make it into a card, because it's going to be a like a different shape card so um, then you really are going to want dibs on it probably for the booth it's going to be super neat look at that he looks so shiny he's so shiny <laughs> I can mix up the uh, <laughs> mix up the address and send it to you <laughs> this is YR31 this is the last color in the combo, so this is where I'm just going to fill in those last little spaces that are white, kind of bring out that yellow a little more. And really just bring it home, and then we're going to work on his head and then his eyes. I had to let that white, that gray... C1 that I put on the outsides of his eyes. I have to, had to let that dry before I go in there with a color because if you do it right after you use the colorless blender, it'll start pulling the color out into the white gray area and then you'll just have a big blobby mess. Look, I rotated that all the way around. You guys dizzy yet? <laughs> He's having some serious fun in the tub. Look at that. You know, I got these nails. I can't pick that up this paper. I need to get my nails done. Look at that orange. That's super awesome. I missed a white spot right there. It's amazing what you can see on the camera. <laughs> That's because, well, you don't have a gorilla with you. You have a bear with you when you go places. Okay, so now we're going to go in, do his head. But I want these spots are going to be the color of whatever color we make this. The underside of the tentacles. The suction cups. We're going to make the spots on his head the same color as whatever we decide to make this. So I'm really going to color around the circles first. So YR18 again. Back to YR18. So I'm going to start down here where his tentacles are overlapping his head. Kind of going to go around these bubbles for now. Really careful around the eye. So I don't want to get any of that orange in his eye at all. You say teal? Wow. That's no surprise there. The teal might look good with this. I don't know. I didn't have any color in mind actually. I'm freezing too. I have a blanket on my lap and I've had a um I've had a blanket on my lap all day and I took off my 
um, sweatshirt to do the video, so I feel like I have more space. Um, because I feel all bogged down when I have that sweatshirt on. Um, but I still have the blanket on my lap and two pair of socks and, yeah, I'm super cold. It's super cold here. Yes, I know. I love this stamp set. I'm trying to pick some of the ones. Well, you guys, I haven't done too many videos yet, so I can really pick all kinds all of the stamp sets. But when I saw this one tonight, I was like, ooh, this is the one I want to do. I haven't colored this one in a while, and I really like him. So I'm going to do a little bit inside. I always do the inside, that inside of their mouth with the darkest color. Um, normally on skin tones, it's like that E04 or whatever, 22 degrees. It was 25 here, and th I'm in Texas. That is not the norm. Um, we're having another one of those little ice storm things. So it'll last two days, and then it'll be 60 or 70 degrees again. It's insane. And everything shuts down. Everything stops. Well, you're five hours south of me? Yeah, you're going to get it, too. So today I had an appointment tomorrow morning, a doctor's appointment, and they called me today before noon and said, we're going to be closed tomorrow for inclement weather, and it hasn't even hit yet. <laughs> I was like, well, um, that's nice. So I'm just pulling out from that darkest shade with this next one, which is YR16, just to kind of smooth out that dark, dark line. Trying not to get this in the spots or on the bubbles. So you could assume those are bubbles around his head, but I, I like to make them different colored spots. Yes, we all need to go visit Tyler and Cameron. They got way warmer weather up there. I didn't even really know this was coming. This wave of cold weather. You buy, I fly. <laughs> I love the way you think. I love the way you think. Anybody on the live tonight going to go to the Pleasanton Expo? Wow, roads were really slick, huh? They are meant to be spots. Cool. Yeah, my mom lives about an hour north of me, so... Um, so that she usually gets it before I do. Or gets it worse than we get it in Rowlett, so. He's so cool looking. I know, right? Well, my dad's from Pennsylvania. I mean, my mom is too, but my, my dad can drive in that stuff. I don't... I never, really I never really worried when I was riding with my dad and the weather was bad. He's, and they were together, so I know he was taking care of my mom. So I'm just finishing off the inside of his mouth because I don't want that to be too light. Your spot is Sacramento. We're going there too, but I was just wondering if anybody on the live that we know was going to be at the first show that we're doing next week. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Coming up fast. Coming up real fast. Start taking that heavy gasp when you realize how close it is. <laughs> I did book my ticket though. I I will be I will be there. Already booked my ticket. 
Yeah, who will be in Pleasant Pleasanton? Is that even how you say it? I'm not even sure I'm saying it right, honestly. I've never been there. This will be my first time to ever be there. Look at him. It's coming together. I'm not going very far off from this because I don't want to make his his eyebrow area go too far up his head. But I definitely wanted to soften the color a little from there, so um, that's why I went over it a couple times, just to kind of soften up that color. Here, I'll show you up close, kind of, so you can see. And now we're going to put in that... Do we have a link to the shows? If you send me a PM, I'll send you a list of them. Or did you do our ATCs? Did you do... Do you um, do the ATCs in the group? Because anybody who did the ATC in the group will get one of these. This is, was my ATC from this last time. And it has all the shows on there. The only one that's missing is Florida because they added it later. But um, anybody who is in it is going to get one of these. So they'll have all the dates. But if you're not in that, then you can always ask us or I can post that on, in the page so people can see it. Or you can look up the expo. Like the Kraken in drag. And um, Yeah, you can, we can put it in the group, or you can go to the Expo website and look at all the locations they're going to be at this year. We'll be at all of them. So, whatever's listed, you can count on we'll be there. We will be there. Just going to soften these little shadows under these circles on his head. There we go. <laughs> You're commenting a lot and you tagged a bunch of people. That's what it did to me the other day. I was like, leave me alone. I should be able to comment as much as I want. I mean, why would they put a lock on how much you can comment? Is that because of like trolls or something? I don't know why that is. <laughs> I know that um, I've the only time I've ever been uh, got a Facebook notification like that was when um, I was tagging all those people on Jamie's live. That's the first time I'd have ever had it give me a message saying, "Yeah, you can't comment anymore. Sorry, you maxed out your limit." And I was like, "What does that mean?" I didn't even know I had a limit. Ha ha. Yes, you should be able to say what you want. It is your group. You should be able to say what you want. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, you made my night, Ellen. Okay, so I'm going to take out the oranges for now. And just set them aside so I can write them all down for you guys on the... So if you didn't know when I upload the video, um, I missed his eye real quick. Hold on. I think I might leave that white, actually, so it looks like it's his eyeball. Um, I put the colors in the details when I upload it so, you can, so people can prepare with the colors before they start the video. What did we say? Teal? Or, I don't know. Mm, that's, that'd be kind of obnoxious, wouldn't it? I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, we are going to do the bubbles somewhat. Blue. Purple? Purple might be fun. You know I like purple. If you say purple, that's it. I'm doing purple. 
let me see. Mm, I think we need a purple purple. Or the brighter purple. Let's do... Let's try this. Let's try BB17. It's dark. But then... BB13. We just have small spaces, so we should be good with that. BB11. I think we need something a little brighter. What if we mix this one in there? Oh, nope. That's not going to work. How about... Maybe if we add this one on the end. Ah, yes. There we go. Let's do that. Let's do BB17 and BB13 and BB11 and then V01. Just going to bring in a little bit of pink there at the end. So starting with BB17. So there's this part right here is part of his underside of his tentacle right there. He's got those little suction cups. So I'm kind of building those back in just a little bit. So it doesn't look like just a big purple blob there. I also want to build this little line here between the orange and the purple so I don't actually accidentally go into the orange with my purple. So we're going to have one strip there and then there's this little tiny area right here between the boat and his tentacle. Then there's one over here. These are really small spots. Then there's one down here. And these ones that are just showing the, the part that's stuck up, I'm going to make that the lightest color, so we're skipping that for now. So then this side, I want to kind of build this one back in. This one. Kind of bring that in. So let me turn this a little bit so you guys can see and my hand's not blocking it. Very delicate work. Very delicate. And notice I have my hand way down on the marker, so I have a lot more control over where I'm putting these lines because if I put my hand way back down here, I don't have as much control. So you'll see while I'm coloring that I'll move my hand up and down on the marker to make sure that I have the right level of control. Okay, and then don't see any over here, so there's just those, oh, right here, almost missed it, right here, very small, and then I, I'm going to do these spots on his head as well, because they're not very big. Oh, 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 she's in Facebook jail. Oh my gosh. Wow. I've never been in Facebook jail. I just stop commenting when it tells me to stop. I've never been in Facebook jail. How long do they make you stay in Facebook jail? Hi, Amy. 
do they make you stay in for like 24 hours or something? I don't know how that works. I've never gotten in trouble before on Facebook. You watch though. I will, eventually. So I'm just doing the underside of these circles. And then I'm gonna do these little ones that are up under the bubbles. But I'm just doing the, like the underside of those. I'll show you up close so you can see it. So that they'll really stand out when we put those lighter colors in there. Yes, I use the Brother Scan and Cut. I have one um, that I use to cut my images out, especially when I have a ton of them to cut out. I cut them on the Scan and Cut. Yes, I'm starting to do lives now, late night lives with Sandy, Monday through Friday, starting at 10 p.m. So, hi Michelle. So we're going to BV13. And I'm just gonna pull out a little bit from um, where I left off with the darkest shade. But still very tiny, tiny little brush strokes. And because we have two more colors to go, so I have to leave space for those. I mean, I don't have to, it's my picture. I can do what I want. So if I run out of space, I run out of space. Hi, Lori. But, um, but I'm gonna try not to run out of space because I wanna lighten up this purple and make it a little more bright. So it really stands out. Can you use any mats? No, you can't because what happens is you have to use the one that comes for Brother and you also have to be careful because there's several versions of the Brother Scan and Cut and some of them will, um, will cut on your machine and some of them won't. So um, yeah, you gotta be real careful with that because I bought a mat that doesn't, it doesn't work in my machine. So that was frustrating. They last a pretty good while. You can cut quite a bit with them before you, you know, before you have to replace it. Especially if you're not doing things that are too awful thick. Hi, Pam. If you set the cut, the blade cutting at the right range so that it's not cutting through the paper and then through the mat, it lasts longer, but if you set it too deep because you're worried about it, it cutting all the way through your image and you don't test it, then you could cut the mat, and the more you cut the mat, the faster you wear it out. So you want to be cautious with that. Start learning with how, what width the paper you have and what you need to put your settings on, and that's just trial, trial and error. Yeah, sure. I like my brother's scan and cut. I'm very happy with that. I do have a silhouette as well. I've never cut images with the silhouette. It's too complicated. I do have the one you take a picture of and you scan it to your machine or something. I tried to do it once or twice and I couldn't make it work. So I got frustrated and said, forget that. Okay, now we're on BV11. So this is gonna cover up most of the space, leaving just very small spaces left and then the tips of those little suction cups we're not going to color those in because i want to use that very last color so so we're just going to put a little one this one you also have a big kick oh bring yeah i know i remember all of that madness um a big kick. I don't know what a big kick is. Is that like a big shot or is that an electronic machine that I don't really know what it is. I'm not sure I've heard of that. Although I, I, I have to say I don't I have a Gemini. I used a big shot before the Gemini and so you know both of those last pretty well so I haven't bought new 
machines in a long, long time. Big shot, yeah. I haven't used any of those in a anything other than those two in a long time, and I only switched to the Gemini because I don't have to crank the bar to make it go through. It does it. It's the push button. Put, just put the thing in there and it goes. I don't even have to push a button. So I kind of like that. So some of this looks like I'm filling in the whole circle right there, but I did it so, so very lightly that you'll be able to see this last color that's gonna bring in the pink tone. You'll be able to see that through it. Alrighty, looky that. I like that purple and orange together. Yeah, the weather is, it's, I mean, it's, it didn't get bad here at my house, actually, but my mom is about an hour north, and it was getting kind of yucky for her. Um, thanks. I love this image, too. Um, this is from What's Cracking stamp set. It's super fun to color. So it's supposed to get, it's supposed to be bad here tomorrow ice on the roads because it's below freezing right now but you know all my appointments got canceled I had one today at the massage place and they canceled and then I had one with the doctor's office tomorrow and they canceled me so I won't be going anywhere I will just be at home staying safe makes it look electric it does I agree 100% I like the way it looks. And I like this um, this pink thrown in there too. This pinkish violet whatever. It's not really pink, but compared to this shade of purple. I mean it really is a purple color, but the more um, the more you bump it up against the dark uh, muted purple, it looks it looks like pink a little bit. Okay, let's see, we're not missing anywhere. We got a few little tentacles around here. Got one over here, one over here. All right, you know we're gonna get, every time I do this image, I miss a spot. So we're gonna get right down to it and then I'm gonna go, uh-oh, I missed this spot. So you have been warned. How did I get my name on my Copics? Um, so I used the silhouette. I printed my name out um, 370 times because there's 358 markers and I wanted some on my multi-liners and a few other little items but it's not too hard if you have like a silhouette or whatever you use at home um, you just set up your name like a bunch of times on one sheet and then you have to um, then you have to um, weed it. That was the hardest part. I'm just going back in real quick with this BB11 because this little dot got really, really bright and I didn't want it to be quite that bright. So I'm just going back in just a little bit to, to darken those up just a tad. And then I'm going to come back in with the V01 one more time just to blend out that dark color I put in there. So I'm not going to spend much time on top of it because I don't want to lighten it up again. And there we go. So now he has, isn't that super cool? I love all of it. I think this part right here got washed out a little bit. So I'm gonna go back in with the darker purple and fix that. This, is this the Copic Caddy you're talking about? This is the, um, this is the Copic holder. And my husband designed it and he is currently printing them. You can probably hear the printer in the background. Um, this is, first I'm gonna, oh, I picked up the wrong one. I'm glad I looked at that. I'm gonna go in with BB13 to darken this up just a little bit. Um, he's currently printing them now and they will be in the shop 
and I can say an exact date now, they will be in the shop on Tuesday because I will be taking them with me on the airplane to Idaho to put them in the shop. Good night, Karen. Thanks for joining. I know it gets a little late for some people, but then again, those of us who are up late at night, we like to have a little late night, somebody to hang out with us when it's late night. So those are our purple colors for our little guy. I think I might actually, I'm going to hold on to those because I might actually do his eyes sort of purple too, but maybe not with the pink added in, so they just kind of stay that darker purple. But I haven't decided for sure. So what I think we're going to do next is I'm going to do the bathtub. We were up till 5.30 a.m. Oh my goodness, I was up until 3, 2.30 or 3. And I think I'm gonna make, just make the bathtub like a gray-ish, like a shiny gray bathtub. And I'm really gonna use these tea colors, tea tonal colors. And when I use them, sometimes you have to use a bunch of them. <laughs> this is T8 and T7 and T6 and T5. And then I'm going to throw in T3. Because sometimes it's a big jump between, between them if you, so I just sometimes I use them all. So I'm going to start out with my T8, doing I think we should do these, and maybe we'll do the bathtub a different color. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do these little legs in the gray color. And then we can pick some awesome color for the bathtub. Uh, what do you guys think? What does the T stand for? It's a tone gray, so the T stands for tone, because you could, if you wanted to, um, you could use um, this color underneath a, a different color in order to bring out, to show the shadow behind it. So you can like mix this color underneath other colors. I mean, you can really do it with any of them, but this is more of a tone, tone uh, like a toning the, in, toning the color down, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's definitely a different color. Like if you take your C's, they're a cool gray, and you take your W's, or, which are a warm gray, and then you take your T's and your N's, so the N is neutral, neutral tone, and like a neutral color. This one is tonal. Then there's cool and warm. But if you took them all and colored them in a row, you would be able to see the difference. Metallic markers by Copic. Mm, I don't think they really have any metallic. They do have what they call Spica, S-P-I-C-A. I don't know if that's exactly how you say it or not. Um, and they have like that mica stuff in them, so they look like they're glittery, metallic-ish, kind of. Um, and I've had them before, but I didn't really like them. Aw, oh, thanks, Amy. I didn't really like them because um, I just felt like they skipped a lot when I tried to use them. So I wasn't a fan, but I could have had a bad set. You never know. Um, and I don't really um, put other colors into my my image, like, you know, like metallic or shiny or whatever. I don't really put that in there. I do want to start trying to mix um, the color pencils, like putting color pencil on top of um, Copics. So I've been practicing that right now, but I'm doing that like on my own time, not in front of you guys until I get better at it. But I want to learn how to 
um, show more details with putting colored pencil over Copic markers, but I haven't done that yet. Neons, yes, there's neon colors. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight neon colors. They call them fluorescent, but it's kind of the same thing. And um, I have all of those, and I really like them. I think the pink one is my favorite. I like the purple one. The blue ones kind of look a little bit like some of the other blue colors. They don't really look like a true bright fluorescent color. So I don't really see an impact as much out of those. A way to color chrome. Oh, yeah. Um, that takes some practice for sure. But uh, I think you can get those chrome colors from uh, using the, the grays too, but you've got to get those shiny parts in the right place. It takes a little bit of practice. I did some, uh, like, let me... Let me show you one, these fish that Jamie did. That look really, really good like that. So mine are a little darker, but Jamie's came out really super good. Hold on, I got a ton of fish here. Let's see if I can find that one real quick. We're doing these fish in the make and takes at the expo, so we've been coloring fish like crazy. We got purple fish and pink fish and orange and yellow and green and blue and oh my goodness I really want to find that one because I think that might give you an idea of some really pretty and maybe we can ask Jamie to do that on her next live again so you can see how she did it but it looks really cool super cool well I know it's here somewhere hey honey can you help me look for this one this thing because I've already looked through it twice and I don't see it so can you can you come look through here and find the light gray ones that um, Jamie did so I don't so I'm not making everybody sit here just keep swinging me <laughs> just look through it there's this is I, this is dark gray but there's a really light one with some uh, white gel pen over it and um, and that clear uh, Sparkly gel pen, whatever you call that. I don't even know what it's called. But don't tell me I lost the gray fish. They have to be there. Oh, you found them. Yay. Okay, one second. Let me finish this and then I'll show you those gray fish. I say gray. They're not really gray. They kind of look like silver, shiny, sparkly fish. Here we go. Ready? See, they don't do quite as justice on the camera as they are for real, but they're pretty awesome looking. And she's really good with that light color. I tried to imitate her and look how dark mine are. <laughs> because she colors really light, but she also put that um, sparkle pen over it. That one that... Um, just puts a glittery effect. You can really see it on this one. See that? It's super neat. But you can get that. I mean, that could almost look chrome-ish as well. Um, but we have an image coming out where we can practice that on it. Uh, keep your eyes peeled in uh, March. So now I'm using T3, which is significantly lighter than those other colors. And what that's going to do is really lighten up and wash out my color a little bit. But it also makes it look like it gives it texture. Wink, it's like Wink Estella. Okay, see how it kind of changes the texture of that when you go down in these low numbers? I really like that. Here, this is what it is. It's a glitter jelly roll. So, it's sparkly, see? But it's clear. 
So whatever you put it over, it makes it sparkly. It makes it that color sparkly. So instead of buying a whole bunch of sparkle pens, like your like, you know, glittery sparkle Spica pens, I just use this one and you can put it over any color and it makes it sparkly. I really like that pen. I used to buy all the different colors, but then I quit buying them because I felt like I could get the same effect out of that one that one pen. So I only started using that one pen. And I'm putting this um, this T3 on there a lot because I'm really saturating the paper with that because I wanted to lighten it up and make it smooth. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if she has this in the shop or not. You could look, but this is this is a jelly roll. See, it's just called jello, jelly roll, and look, it's Spacura. But it's the clear. It's called clear, and I think you get it in like a three pack at like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something like that. You can get it. You get three clear ones at the same time. Um, but we can look into that and see if we can get any in the shop. I don't know if we have any right now or not. I have to ask Jamie. In fact. Let me write that down real quick. And I will ask her tomorrow. Okay. Let me blend this one out. And then what did we say for the bathtub? Want to do the bathtub yellow? Is that what you said? Yellow? I don't know. You think the yellow will work well with this? And we are going to do the ducky probably. Well, we could do duckies any color, too, because it's a rubber ducky. I love rubber duckies. I have about 15 rubber duckies in the bathroom for my grandson to play with when he's over here and he has to take a bath. They all have different, um, different looks to them, so he always says, that's the, <laughs> that's the daddy one, that's the mommy one, that's the... <laughs> it's funny. I like them. Some have horns and some have, you know, whatever you want. Okay, so I think I was going to take these out of here, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use these very same colors in, on the boat, on some portions of the boat. So this right here, I would think is going to be like a shiny, um, like a shiny color. So I'm not going to use quite as much of the darker shades. I'm just going to use it around the edges really, really lightly. And really, I have no idea what I'm supposed to color that, what color I'm supposed to color that crazy thing. I don't even know what that is. And then I'm going to do this little pole right here. And then this little piece up here at the top. Oops, and there's one more right there. So just the gray, shiny gray parts of this boat while I have this color out, we're just going to do that. I'm going to skip um, T7 and just go for T6 because I want this to be lighter than these. So okay, I will choose a uh, some yellow shade yellow colors for the bathtub when I get done with this um, gray part. Let's see. Just a little bit underneath there. Wait till we get to the bubbles. You guys will like the bubbles because I like to put all kinds of really light colors in my bubbles. This is T5. I'm going to finish off this area up here. Finish that. Finish that. I don't know. Does anybody know what color that piece right there is supposed to be? Here, I'll hold it up closer so you guys can see it. What? 
is that? Yes, I am going to use that. Yes, I am going to use the, the clear um, glitter color for the bubbles. Yeah, for sure. Then you can see what it really looks like. It's super cool. Just like the um, just like the white gel pen, um, you can put it over the Copics and it makes a really good impression, but you do not want to then go over the white or the glitter with your Copic marker. So if you see after you put that down, if you see that you missed something, you, you can't, you don't do it. It'll mess up your nib. It'll clog it all up for you. So you can do it over the Copics, but you can't do Copics over it. Like an upper deck, usually like a wood color. Mm, okay, so maybe we can make that kind of a wood, a wood color and then that a different shade of that same wood color. That might look good. Oh, I think we need to do this little tail thingy back here. Or maybe we can just do that same color as the wood. I'm not sure it really matters. We're all looking at the Kraken anyway. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with that shade. Like an upper deck. Hmm, interesting. Oh, see, I knew we were going to miss something on this. Look, if you look right here, like right there, that's, that's his tentacle behind the... <laughs> I missed it. But it'll just be the darkest color, so I'll just pull out the... These are slippery little suckers. When you clean them up, they are slippery. I'll just take the wire R18 and fill in that spot. I knew I wouldn't be able to get through this whole thing without missing a spot. But it's a little spot. Okay, so yellow colors for our bathtub. Let's do... Let's do like a rustic yellow bathtub-ish color. Hold on one second. Let's try these. So here we go. This is how we choose our color combo. So I'm going to try almost making this a little bit gold-ish. So although that color doesn't really look yellow, just trust me. Y28. Then I'm going to use this Y26, which is going to change the shade of that a little bit. I need to clean this marker. And then I'm going to use Y20, YR24. So this is going to bring out like a rustic look, even though they don't really blend that well together. These other colors will, will bring it in. See, then this one's YR23. That's nice. And this one is YR21. And then I'll probably go back over it after I get done with this one. So we'll use this one on both ends to kind of bring out that goldish look. So let's try it and see what happens. This is all experimenting. If it doesn't work out, well, you know. We just won't do it next time. So starting with Y28. We are going to start with the bottom side of the bathtub. Because that would be shaded. You love, aw, thanks. You love watching me color? I love coloring. I love coloring. When I get done with these lives, I'm always like, oh, I want to color something else. I think people don't want to stay on that long, though. I could probably do this all day. Well, I do do it all day, but I mean, I'm not usually live all day, but I definitely color in a lot, especially on weekends. Right now I'm not coloring quite as much because 
I retired in October and then they called and asked me to help them out at work. <laughs> they miss me, I guess. So I agreed to help them out for a bit. So I'm kind of working a little bit right now so I don't get to color um, during the day as much as I was before. So I miss it. That's why I'm liking hanging out with you guys. I knew this was a big image, it might take a little while, but how oh, you guys don't mind, right? So I'm just kind of doing around the top and the bottom because, you know, the top of the tub usually curls over and it's a little bit thicker up there. So I'm just kind of giving it that outline look. And then we want it to look kind of round, so i got to put a little bit of um, shadow around the edges so it looks like it's a round bathtub when we get done. Ah, that's a bummer. Did you get the card I sent? Why 26? So this one, I'm going to go completely over the other color. Let me see if I can show you up close what it looks like. See, it still shows the shadow area, but it kind of makes that a darker color. So I'm going to just go over completely over the other color I put on there. I kind of like doing this when I want something to look somewhat gold. This guy is going to look like he is sitting in a jackpot of bathtubs which is pretty good because you know he's gotta he's gotta steal the the bounty <laughs> from the pirate ship he's holding up in his bathtub with all these bubbles he's a happy camper wait we have a stamp set called happy camper but you know what I mean He is so cute. I really like him too. I don't think that we colored him up as much as I wanted to um, when he came out because he came out last year. But he's so adorable and we have more in the shop now. So I thought now would be a good time to color him again. Some, sometimes for new people, they don't like to do an image this big just because they don't know how to do it or they don't know how to tackle all the pieces. But see how I'm tackling it in just like small doses, just small pieces of the, of the picture at one time. And uh, it makes it easier. Don't focus on the whole picture. Just focus on the small, the small part you're working on at the time. And I usually try to do either the, the most complicated part first and get it out of the way. When would I use the ch chisel part of the marker? Um, I use the chisel when I'm doing a background. And I may, plat I may put him on something when we, when we get to that part. Um, so you'll probably get to see me use it a little bit whenever I do the background for this. Because I did kind of stamp him on here like I was going to make my own background for it. I probably won't tonight, but we maybe once we finish coloring him up, we can pick that up tomorrow night. And we can do the background for him and then make him into a card. Well, that would be fine. Oh, thanks. I make the coloring look easy. It is. If you've been doing it for like 11, 12 years. <laughs> it's not easy. I, there are some things, I, some images I have challenges with, and I'm not real experienced with backgrounds, so we'll be, some of that, I'll be teaching you what I know, but that doesn't mean it's going to come out <laughs> like, like Jamie's. I'm going to use this one, um, which is YR24, which is why I'm not coloring. You know how sometimes I swatch on the paper? That's why I'm not, because I thought, Maybe I could try background. 
This is the third color in the combo, but look at how much darker this color is. So I'm gonna use this color to do a bit of um, accent areas. Like, I wanna kinda of show that this bathtub has like a lip on it. So I'm gonna come in there with this color and kind of give it a little bit of a lip. You know, because sometimes these type of bathtubs have that, but you, it's shaped like that, but you can't really see it. So I want to kind of put it in there. And then what I'm going to do is a little bit of um, shadow off of that line that I put on there. So it really looks like it's, it's indented a bit. Kind of give that impression. And that's just another way that you can like make your coloring more unique than what you see everyone else do is to put in some little accents in there like maybe you put spots on a shirt or stripes on a shirt or in this case I put a lip on the bathtub just something to make it make it yours and usually you know like people don't do that in the beginning but once you start really learning how to color you want yours to to stand out a little bit so you try to come up with different ways of coloring the images just to give it a, a different look than what everybody else would have. So since I have this as being like a really dark shadow area, I'm also going to come down here and put some of this really dark color around the base of this bathtub. There aren't any very, there aren't any colors like, oh, if I just do this color combo, I'm going to get a gold looking color. So I sort of build this one a little bit different than I um, normally do. So usually I just go dark to light, but this one we're gonna kind of sift back and forth between the colors. Give you a little bit of an example on how to do how to do that. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna put it under his. Uh, his little tentacle because I don't think I need it there. Have an entire set of Copic markers. Is there a way to start? Uh, yeah, you have to buy them. <laughs> like, unless you have a crap ton of money, you have to buy them slow. I would say buy them either in a color combo that you like. Like, you could go for some ideas. You could go into the shop and we have some uh, color cards in there that give you color combinations for like skin or hair or things like that. You could go look at those and see what the color combos are or if there's something in particular you like to color we can you know people can help you with which colors to start off with. I mean when I started I took some like when I very first started the boss that I was working for yeah, I, I couldn't afford the entire set either. Um, the lady that I was working for, she was teaching Copic classes, and she had already tried to get me in it like a year before then. And I said, uh-uh, those markers are, I'm not doing that. Those markers are expensive. And um, she just kept saying, look what I made, look what I made. And I saw them, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to do that so bad because I'm an artist at heart anyway. Um and so finally I started going to her classes. Well, each class had a list of markers that you needed. And she tried to limit them to like very small images so you didn't have to have very many markers to do it. And then I just started building them like that based on a, a class or based on an image I wanted to color. And I just did them like that. And then, you know, of course I told everybody I knew that's what I wanted for my birthday and Christmas and everything. Yes. Many trips to Hobby Lobby with 40% off coupons. Many trips to Hobby Lobby with 40% off coupons and making my friends go with me so I could get the discount more than once because they wouldn't let you. Back then, I know that now, like before they Hobby Lobby quit doing that coupon, um, they used, they wouldn't let me, when I was buying them, they wouldn't let me use it on like a set of Copics, they would only let you use it if you bought one 
one Copic. <laughs> so I would take my mom, my mother-in-law, my friends, and I would say, come in with me and just buy this one marker up 50% off or 40% off. <laughs> That's kind of how I built my set. But it took me about a year and a half, I think, maybe a little longer than that to get the full set. But I was on a mission. This is YR21. So this is going to bring a little more of the yellow tone in there. But almost like a muted yellow. So we're just mixing these colors together. See how it comes out. Look at that bathtub. Mm, good call on this color, by the way. I love it. It's looking good. And you see how even though I put that um, easy to refill the marker, yeah, they're easy to refill. I mean, some people take the nib off and fill the barrel, but I don't. I just do it right over top of the nib. No reason why you can't do that. Plus, it helps me see if I have a clogged nib. Because when you're putting the ink... Huh? Yeah. Usually the, um, the ink... Like when you pour the ink over the nib, you can watch it soak in all the way down. But if you pour it and it kind of runs down the side and doesn't absorb into the mark the nib, it usually means that there's some kind of clog, clog nib going on there. So it helps me to be able to see that. But if I was taking the nib off, I wouldn't I wouldn't know until I was coloring and it got all sticky, and then I'd be like, oh man. Now I'm going to take this color and just go over this very, very top part to kind of smooth out that line that I put in there. But I'm not going to spend much time hovering over that because I don't want to saturate it too much. I just want it to blend a little bit. And then I'll hold this up so you guys can see where we are with this one. Look at that bathtub. Isn't that awesome? I like that bathtub. Okay, moving on, moving on. Should we put any of this yellow on the boat? I mean, we could do um, like two of the sails in the yellow. We might as well, right? Let's just go for it. This time, I'm going to start with that dark, that mid middle dark color I'm gonna reverse those two so that YR24 was the third color oops the third color I used and this was the first and I'm just gonna swap those oh you know what very tiny brush strokes in the direction of the sail Thank you. Um, and we want this, we're gonna want this to be really shiny in here so it looks like the, so it looks like it's really curved out like this. Does that make sense? So we want it to give that appearance. So that's why I switched to the darker shades right up here at the top. Because when I come in with the lighter shades and the shades right here, it's gonna make it look like it's, like it's curved out. I kind of want to give that impression and then up here I'm gonna do the opposite panels so I'm gonna do this one and there's no reason for this just because that's what I feel like doing right now <laughs> not because it really matters okay and this one is Y26. So you'll see these. We're going to achieve pretty much that same 
shade. Just going about it a little bit different. It might be a teeny bit different. It looks like my um, YR24 is a little bit sticky. So I don't know if you can see that. I kind of kind of was able to correct it a little bit. But if you see how this, let's see if I can get that in focus. Do you see how this part right up here is not blending very well? It's because when I touch it, it like moves the ink around really weird. It doesn't blend and it's because it's sticky. I can see it on the paper. So you saw me go like that. When it first starts getting sticky, if you touch it like that, you can take it off. But if you keep going with that sticky marker, you're gonna mess up the picture. Hi, Eileen. We are coloring the Kraken. He's super bright. Super bright, super brightly colored today. So these are really light brush strokes, like really, really light brush strokes. Because I don't want to put too much color in there because I want it to be really light in this center part right here. And I'm going to skip this YR23 because it's really bright and I don't want to put that bright right in the middle of my, of my sail. So I'm going to use this one using that back and forth swishing motion to, um, to blend those two together and saturate that paper, leaving that really high highlight. So there we go. So when I hold it up, you'll be able to see that it's significantly lighter in those middle areas. It's a little bit more obvious when you see it for real than it is in the picture, but, um, but still, it looks awesome. Okay, so we need some browns for the the bottom of the boat and this little piece that's sticking up and then you guys tell me what color we should put on the sails with that goldish color so while I'm picking out some browns and I want this to look like wood so I'm gonna mix these colors a little So I'm going to take E27, E35, E23, and E21. And those are the colors that I am going to do the rest of the boat. This part down here. It's closest to the Kraken. Tiny, tiny, tiny brush strokes right there. Longer brush strokes right here. And then tiny, tiny brush strokes again. Tiny ones. Super tiny. And then I'm going to do a little bit along this edge right here and just under his little tip of his tentacle. <coughs> And then I'm going to go through and do the, a few of these little tiny strokes going in that same, staying with the direction of the boat because it's kind of curving down. So I'm doing my brush strokes kind of cur curving them as well. And then this part up here, I'm only going to put a teeny bit of that dark, dark, dark color there and here. And maybe right Our next color is E35. So going from where the last brush stop stroke stopped, 
and extending it out. with these little brush strokes again. Then down from the top. Just wanna get this part right here that we decided was some type of wood deck. We're just going to color that in a little bit. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I didn't see you jump on. And E23 is going to be our other color. And I'm, I'm going to want this piece up here to be lighter than this piece down here. So I'm going to finish this piece with this color, E23. So I'm going to do that little bit of swishing back and forth again, just to blend the two colors together. Really tiny, light brush strokes back and forth, moving your marker in the direction of the ship. Where is the Copic holder from? My husband makes them. And um, they will be in the Sweet Sentiment shop on um, Tuesday, next week. So he, he makes them. The 3D printer just stopped, so it has been printing all night. <laughs> but yes, he, des he designed it for me, and then uh, we're going to sell them in the shop. So it holds his five marker combo and holds your stuff there. And I love it. It's so helpful when you're doing lives. And I know you do lives sometime, right? I don't know what the price is going to be yet. I don't know. I, I know it. I, do you, did we decide yet, honey? No. It's not no. Yeah, Jamie would have to answer that. She got stuck in Facebook jail earlier. So um, she's not on here. <laughs> I thought you did lives. Yeah. So, um... So yeah, just check it out in the, uh, it'll be in the shop on Tuesday because I'm flying to Idaho on Tuesday and I'll be taking them with me so she can put them in the shop on Tuesday. <laughs> ah, look, you guys know each other. Awesome. Okay. So that's it for the brown. Now I think we need like a really, um, like we need some kind of bright color on this. I don't know. I don't know. And we have to do soap and we have to do duck. Duck is easy. We'll make the duck yellow. Let's use the yellows from the orange yellow combo on the little rubber ducky. Oops, on the little rubber ducky. Because that'll really bring him out in yellow. So we used Y35 and we used YR31 on the octopus. And then I'm going to throw this Y13 in the middle of those and we're going to do this little rubber ducky. But before I do that, I'm going to do his beak with two of the orange colors that we did with the Kraken. So I'm going to use YR18, then 15 on his little beak because it's so tiny. And then this one is going to be the YR15. Kind of finish his little beak off. You can't see his feet, so we only have to do his little beak orange. And then we'll do him in yellow, starting with Y35. And I'm going to go down here underneath his little wing and on the bottom of his belly. He's just a little guy. And then Y13. This is going to be a more yellow yellow, like a lemony yellow. 
really, really bright yellow, so that's going to bring our, our rubber ducky appearance out. So there we have most of our rubber ducky done. And then I'm going to come in with this white R31 and, and just blend that out. I may have to go back in with another light yellow to keep that yellow color. Yep. So let's use Y11. Okay. Because we're, we're almost done. And then I'm just going to kind of put this over all of it just to lighten that to a more rubber ducky color. And there we go. Now we have a cute little rubber ducky. So we just have, oh, let's do our soap yellow too. We might as well while we have the yellows out. So Y35, I'm going to do the inside of this soap. And I'm going to do the part that's touching the octopus or kraken, whatever you want to call them. I keep calling them an octopus. I think it's kind of close to the same thing. This one is Y13. So just brightening up that soap just a little bit. I'm going to skip the YR31 this time and go right into the Y11 to keep that really, really bright soap. There we go. We do, and it's right here. If you want to see it, it looks like these are the new refills, right? Got a little tray with the lip on it that you can put your your cleaning supplies on and then there's another piece to it I guess my husband didn't set that one down for me but there's another piece that holds your marker when you're refilling it so you if you take the caps off you can just sit it in there so you can use both hands when you're filling it that's pretty super cool. Honey, where's the other part of the stand? Do you have one of those handy you could bring over here while I'm doing this? They are awesome. I'm really excited. Here's some colors, you guys. White, pink, purple. There's black. See here, this one's in pink. This is the other piece. So this will be sold as a set. So refill station. So your marker, when you take the caps off, it just sits in there like that where you can see. So if you, and it doesn't touch the bottom, but if you put too much ink in it, in it um, and you overfill it, It'll just leak out on here and then you can just use your Q-tips or wipes or whatever to clean it off. But my favorite part is that like I tore a ligament in my hand so it's really hard for me. But this way you can squeeze with both hands. And I, I have a difficult time doing that so I asked my husband to make me something and that's what we got. And yes, these two pieces are going to be sold together because they're the refill station. So you kind of need both of them at the same time. So these two are gonna be sold together and this one will be separate. And we all have matching colors. So I know I showed purple and pink, but the sets will be matching colors. Pink and purple and white and black, I think, are the first colors we started with. So yeah, it's super cool. Okay, so I think that we should put the purple in the the purple colors in the in the flag so I'm gonna go back to my BB 17 13 and 11 because I feel like we need MIV01 because I feel like we need a little bit more 
of a different shade popped in there so I think this will this will really bring it together and then we'll work on those bubbles and they won't take that long they're pretty fast you'd be surprised at how fast the bubbles go um, but you'll want to stay for the bubbles because we're going to put that that sparkly glitter over top of them I love doing the bubbles they used to make me nervous but now I super love them And then we also have, I know, I know we really need to. So we're, we're working on that. So yeah, my hubby, he's, he's really crafty. I say, I need, and he comes up with some kind of design. And we troubleshoot from there. So it's, it's pretty cool having him around. Like, I need something to do that will hold this. Or something that will... You know so he made the I told him I need something to put all my little teeny tiny embellishments in so he made these these are honey bowls and so I have those on my desk and I and I, I love them so he made those for me and then Jamie came to visit and said oh we need those in the shop so she ordered from him what was the other thing? There was one other thing, wasn't there? Something else I said I needed, he made for me. Oh yeah, card stands. Look at that. So your card fits on it like this, so you can display your stuff. You can use it when you're taking your photographs and stuff. So there's large ones and small ones. Super awesome. And he's been, he worked on this and we had them like this and he's looking for, he was looking for a new way to model them so they ship better. So this is going to be the next one. And this little one will hold a slimline card and everything. It's super awesome. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So he makes something, we love it, and then he's always trying to make it better. I'm like, it's awesome just the way it is. But a perfectionist in him, trying to make it even better. What a great hubby! Yeah, I won't. Tra I'm not ever gonna trade him in. <laughs> the new card holder is cool. Are the large ones sold out in the store? Yeah. Yeah. He um. And he's going to be working on the card stands, too, because, you know, we have uh, expos coming up. So we he ha we have to stock up for that because those card stands do really good at the expos. But, yeah, he noticed I was trying to sit stuff up in my craft room, and he was like, "What do you, do you have anything to put those on? I was like, no. So he came up with some. I'm like, he's so awesome. But then the problem is, is people come over and they're like, oh my God, I love that. And so um, we end up selling mine and all I ever get are the prototypes or, um, or I don't have any at all. I was like, um, I need, I need, I need. <laughs> And I need all the things in purple. <laughs> in addition, prototype embellishments. <laughs> oh yeah, and he makes embellishments. Have you seen the embellishments in the shop? Have you guys seen them? The um, like this month is the water bottles uh, that go with the little hippo that I drew. So I drew the water bottle too, and when I draw the art, then he can make them into embellishments because I have I own the rights to the art. <laughs> and so, um, oh, I missed that one. I'm gonna have to go back and do that. So um, I'll show you in a minute. He made like my bear set that came out, uh, the polar the polar bears, the like warm at home or. It's warm at home or something like that. I can't, I can't remember the name, but um, here's the prototype. Like, look at this bear. Isn't that the cutest little embellishment you ever saw? He made them in different sizes. 
Look. <laughs> so these are, um, and they actually are colored in the shop. I think there's still some in there. Um, they, they're different colors. And then when I did the potion bottles, you know, okay, here's the ice cream cone. We sold out of the ice cream cone in the shop, but when we had it, it was, um, oh, here, I do have one. I do have one right here. He actually painted them. So there's a white one. I think I have a strawberry one in here. Hold on, hold please. Oh, here it is. Okay, so the ones you get, those are the samples. So that's what I get is the samples. And then this is what they look like in the shop. So this is that ice cream cone we colored the other night. He made it into an embellishment. So you could add them to your cards like, <laughs> you could be holding an ice cream cone instead of holding a soap or, you know, whatever. And then I drew the potion bottles. So he made potion bottles. So you could even put them on these cards like this as like his shampoo or his, Super cute, right? So yeah, he takes the designs that I draw and then he makes them into embellishments for us. So that's super fun. And I told him what I wanted a teeny tiny little bear. We didn't sell them this small in the shop, but check this out. <laughs> tiny, tiny Do you see how little that is? That's the tiniest bear ever. Oh my gosh, aren't they the cutest ever? Okay, let me fix this. Just going through these colors again. That was BB13. This one's BB11. Um, you need rubber duckies? Yeah, uh, stay tuned. And that's what we started out at. <laughs> stay tuned. Inquiring Minds thinks they know that there might be some in the works. <laughs> some, a rubber ducky image or something similar to that that might generate that type of. Just going over this one more time just to kind of brighten up those purples for that. Because um, I want that to really stand out. All right, bubble time, bubble time. Wait till you see how many colors I use on the bubbles. And they're all going to be out of the realm of what I normally do. So when I do the bubbles, I pick the lightest colors on the spectrum. Hold on, let me pull them. Hold, please. I'm missing one. There it is. Okay, so I pull out all these really light colors. So, oh, I... I didn't want the YG. I wanted the Y. Sorry. All these really light colors. So they're super, super light. Keep him around. Yeah. <laughs> I've had him 25 years. I think he can stay for a while longer. Um, so I use these really bright colors, really light. So you almost can't even see them. B's quadruple zero, BG quadruple zero, RV quadruple zero. R quadruple zero, G quadruple zero, and Y quadruple zero. So I use all of the, a mixture of these throughout, um, put the bear in the boat. Oh my gosh. I may have to do that actually. Look, he's going sailing. <laughs> so I'll use, I won't use all of these colors in every one of the bubbles but I will be using them, you know, mixing them up throughout the... <laughs> he looks funny in the boat, huh? So we'll start. I just kind of put a little bit of these just on... I mean, it's almost kind of a random. There's not really any rhyme or reason, and right now you can't really see much of it because these are kind of translucent. They're going to have a lot of color on them, and I just kind of build them up until they're the color I want. So I start with the lightest one. I know you can't really see it very well. You can see 
maybe if I held it up close you could see it so you can't really see it that well when I'm doing it but as I build it up you'll be able to see it and I want it to be lighter um, so I can make it darker as I go but I don't want to start with the dark because then you can't lighten it up you know so I'm just kind of punching in some of this yellow on some of these bubbles not all of them but some of them I will the ones that are closest to the octopus or Kraken, whatever you, whatever you, whatever you want to call him. So I'm just kind of punching in some of this yellow color. And then I'm going to pick another color to go through. Oops, I want to put a little bit. Okay, and I may come back to this one, but I think that might be all I'm using for that one. So I'm going to take the BG zero, quadruple zero. And I'm going to do the same thing, kind of coloring in the same areas. Just filling in a little bit of color so you can see it. I'll hold it up so you can kind of see it. I only put them in these top bubbles. Do you see how it's starting to build some color? I don't want to color them in solid any one color. So I'm just kind of throwing these in. Because you know when you when you have bubbles, sometimes you can see all the translucent colors throughout the bubbles. That's the effect we're trying to get. And this is just, I just... Practice. I just one day just started practicing on all these bubbles just trying to get a I mean you can try to make them clear and then put the white you know shiny part on it to kind of make it look like a clear bubble but I like it when it has all this other bubbly color to it And I'm not really picking any specific side of the bubble because you know they're floating around so it doesn't really matter. Um, just putting it wherever. Okay. Dang it, I missed that purple spot on the boat again. Better to catch it now than All right, so now I want to bring out, I'm gonna do the RV, just to bring out some pinkish tones to these bubbles. And these I'm gonna try to hit the other side that I did not color with the blue. It's hard to see, so just kinda of touching a little bit. This is a little bit of a deeper color than the last two. You can see it a little more on the paper, so I don't want to put too much. But it, when I get done, it's going to look like I sat here and worked really hard on every single bubble. And as you can see, I am not. I'm just throwing in a bit of color, not even focusing on exactly where the color is going, just as long as there's a little bit on each on most of the bubbles. And I promise when it gets done, it's gonna look awesome and you're gonna be like, wow, that was super easy. Super, super easy. I missed his tongue. And I have to do his eye still, but that'll just take a second. So just looking at it, hitting anywhere that I, don't, I missed. And since I'm on the pink color, I'm going to go ahead and follow that in with some R quadruple zero. And just kind of going over almost all of it. You know, just bringing in a little bit more. Of that red then we'll hit it with the green 
wait till you see these bubbles. Mixing these colors together give you that really good bubbly color. And now I'm almost just kind of saturating most of the bubble with this R color. You can do these however you want. If you want them to look a little more yellow, then use the yellow at this stage. You know, just, just play around with them. I just didn't want the bubbles to be too yellowy because there's enough yellow in the picture already, I think. So that's why I chose to do the pink and the green as the last two colors with the most impact. But already, look at these bubbles already. Don't they kind of look like bubbles? They're coming to life. So now we're gonna put a little bit of the G, zero, zero, quadruple zero. And this one I'm going to do kind of lightly too, just around the edge. Just kind of bringing in some of that. Not a whole lot because this is, it's darkening up, it's darkening up the bubbles now. So just kind of bringing them in. And I really am doing it kind of random. Just building it up until I like it. Let's move over here. Ooh, I missed. I missed a little piece right there of the cracking. You should try this technique with the with the bubbles. I think you would like it. Cause it really brings those bubbles to life. Okay. So at this point, that's when you can decide if you want to make them a little bit darker or if you like them the way that they are. Like if you can see, they have just a really light tint to them, which I like, but I am going to go ahead and put the B quadruple zero in there just in the shadowed areas to kind of deepen them up just a little bit more maybe the underside of the bubbles just to kind of bring in a little more of the blue I mean he is in the water so this will give the more water appearance Just bringing in that in, just a little bit more. We're almost done. And we're gonna put the shiny stuff all over the bubbles in a minute. And I like to do this, if, if you do it and you feel like the color isn't deep enough for you and you wanna make it a little bit more, hi Michelle. Um, then I would, I would just go up to the triple zeros instead of the quadruples or the double zeros, but I like it really light. So just anywhere that you feel like it should be. Okay. So again, that was all my quadruple zeros. I did not bring in the purple one because I think that would be overpowering, but sometimes I do. So when I hold it up, you can see, can you see like the rainbow-ish color in there? See it? So they look like bubbles. And then you take this jelly roll pen right here with the sparkle in it. And then I just put a little bit on the bubbles. Like not, I don't even fill them in all the way. I just kind of do some random little circles on each bubble. This is gonna make it look like water dripping out. So that's why I didn't color those a specific color. Mm, I love these bubbles.
wait till I hold those bubbles up close. They're really going to be awesome. And this glitter, you can really see that color once you put this glitter on there that we were putting in those underneath. That was a little bit hard to see on the camera, but it's super cool when you're looking at it. And when we build a background for this, those bubbles are going to stand out like crazy because they're so light, but they have all that shimmer to them. Oh, he is having fun rub-a-dub-dub -dub in his little tub. Playing with his little boat. I still have to do his eye real quick, but we're just going to do a simple eye. Like the other night, I showed you the detail eyes. Tonight, we're just going to do a simple eye. I'm going to actually do these little spots on the boat like they're silver spots on the boat. So let me see if I can get that to really... Can you see that shine on those bubbles? It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but they are super awesome. This one needs just a little bit more, it looks like. And then I'm pretty happy with that. When you look at it from a distance, it's really sparkly. It's really sparkly but it sparkles different colors when you're looking around at it. So it's, it's pretty awesome. So we're gonna use to do his eyes. I'm gonna just use, this is how I do a simple eyes when I'm doing simple. I mean, you could do detailed like we usually do, but um, I'm just gonna put like, this is BB13. Like I'm just gonna go around here with this one. And then I'm going to take the BB11, and those are the same colors we used on his body. And then I'm just going to soften this edge just a little bit, so you kind of get a, um, a little bit of a two-tone two effect on his eye. Like that. Okay, he's so and then I'm going to go back in one more time with this BB13 and kind of darken this back up right here on the inside. Look at that. See how easy that was to do his little eye? That's more what I call a simple eye. And the eye looks really good because we put that white in there earlier, so it makes it look a bit like it's popping out of his head, which we want it to look like that. And then I'm going to do his tongue and that real quick, and then we're done. So I'm just going to use RV85 to do his little tongue. Just going to give him a little red tongue, and I'm going to give him a little red flag. So that flag's so small. I don't even need any detail on that flag. And then how about tomorrow we'll come in and build him a background. Maybe a bathroom or, I don't know, something. Yeah, don't forget the tongue and flag. That's right, don't forget the tongue and flag. So here he is. He's all orangey yellow. Oh, you like him? He like, I like him too. I'm glad they chose orange. Um, so the my name on the markers, I just used vinyl like vinyl with transfer paper and I printed them out. I'll show you I have some extras right here. So I printed them out 350 times <laughs> and then what I do is I use this transfer um, tape and I just put it over and I rub them really hard and then this transfer tape will pick up the whole name and then I just laid it on the marker like that and then just rubbed it on, took it off, and voila, my name is on there. So the hardest part, or the most time consuming part on this is weeding my name. So if you look here, you can see that my name is already cut in here. But when I had to weed that out, it just, it just takes a while to do that, weeding all that stuff out. So yeah, 
I did it 370 times so I'd have some extra ones. What size font did I use? Um, I don't remember. Although I have the template saved. I made them for someone else who asked one time. I think I did them for like 30 or 35 bucks or something like that. Um, so maybe a half inch at the tallest part. And then the other ones are a little smaller than that. Yeah, about a half inch. And then they fit really good on here. And I just made sure I didn't, they weren't any bigger than one and a half inches long. So you might have to make them a little smaller, smaller if you have a really long name. A little less than one and a half. That's why I didn't put Copic Diva on there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Too much to weed. Um, but you can use any font. I've done some that stick, some where you can, you know, mesh the word together and one prints off all in one big lump. But um, I, this is my favorite font. I think this is the, um, it's like one of Mono Corsova or Cor, Cor, I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. It's complicated. Jamie's are all combined as one word. So hers were a little bit easier to peel off and stick on here because it's all it's all one and mine are all individual letters. But if you use the transfer tape, it's not hard. It's really simple. I have one of Jamie's because she gave me this marker because she had three of them and I mine died while she was here. So I still have one with her name on it. I did not steal it while she was here. <laughs> she gave it to me. Okay. So tomorrow we'll come back and we'll work more on our little Kraken and we'll finish him up. And if you have any other questions, always feel free to reach out to me by PM or, you know, in the group or whatever. And then I will post this out on YouTube so you guys can watch it again. And it'll be part one and part two will be tomorrow night because he's so detailed he took a while. And I don't want to keep you guys up too late. Same time tomorrow, 10 p.m. Central Time. So I'm going to start doing lives Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. for the night owls. Jamie does them at 10 a.m. in the morning for, um, for all the, the early risers. So we thought we'd, we'd add the nighttime late night lives with me since I'm up late coloring late <laughs> so I posted today in the group the pictures of the projects and stuff that I built with the ones we made last week and yesterday yesterday yeah oh it's snowing and everything is frozen oh my gosh you must be getting it bad up there mom she's about an hour north of me I haven't looked outside so I don't know if ours is bad or not but Thank you so much for joining me tonight, and I will see you at Jamie's Live in the morning and then it back here again tomorrow night. Thanks for joining me. Good night, guys.